My second start in Mexico set league records and included a feat I've never accomplished at any level of baseball. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. See, my first start I was really bad. Catch that, get in there, catch that. Dude, who is this guy? So I had a lot to work on before this start to even be competitive. The biggest thing is I hadn't like been on a mound and faced a hitter in like three weeks. I was just not sharp. My command was more shit. Which like to be expected when you don't pitch for a fucking month. Should have gotten a confidence boost and faced Eric. Should have flown him out here for a live BP instead of a bullpen. SB, do we know next start? Uh, Sunday. Okay, so I got six days to my next start. Last start was pretty terrible, command-wise. Um, stuff movement-wise was really good. Just gotta work on reading the uh, hitters a little bit better too. Just gonna throw some light plows today, light plows tomorrow, and then get back on a normal schedule since I have one extra day. Ow! All right, that's it for today. I gotta find out what happened with the brawl, man. I wanna hear the stories. The guys that are in the dugout, like how'd it pop off? What did I miss? As I mentioned in last week's vlog, and if you haven't seen it, you should check it out right here after this video. The boys got into a little bit of a brawl in our first series of the year, which I missed because I was sick. So I really needed to figure out what happened so I'd be up to date on the current standing of the team. Hey, were you in the dugout for when everything popped off? I said that they had some beef with them last year. So that probably played into it for sure. I think that they were going back and forth since game one. So then he's saying something, so the yeah, then, then we base... Then we tied it up. Right. With a homer. Was, and then oh, that's yeah. where everyone's celebrating that in the, you know, at basically home plate. And I guess when he finally was getting back to the, you know, his seat in the dugout, that's when it started to pick up some steam. And, and that's when they started, or the, the third base. The third baseman, third baseman walked like, over and then, you know, you got those guys running in, you got the guys in the bullpen. Yeah, because it looked like it was kind of mild, like he was just walking over talking. Yeah. Like nothing was going to happen, but then their entire team came like storming across yeah. the field. And the, the one of the guys that was in the dugout came over and you could see him in the in the video just come up and just smack Ronnie. Like kind of blindsided him from Yeah, I heard the Ronnie video. got like pretty bad. Yeah, he got he got smacked a little bit and then you had their right fielder, was O'Brien. O'Brien, you see him coming in and he just I think he ended up in our dugout. They, like he was Oh that's a no go. Yeah, he was but uh, <laughs> he broke the bat rack? That's where they were. They were heads up, heads up. Oh, speaking of, lots well, of. I mean, it's I mean, like three games in. Like, what's? We just yeah. came out of spring training. Everyone's like, oh, let's just and get the year them. going. We played them in three days in uh, La Paz. Yeah. And everything was fine. Fine. Yeah. And they've no? been in one. I've been like on the field. Like, you know, guys kind of like come on. And, like, we never yeah. really get together, and everyone kind of. But I've never been actually like in one. No, I don't think I've ever seen one in Japan. No. Yeah. Culture is not really a, uh, a brawling culture. No, nah, I wouldn't think so. I'm not with the team for three days and shit just pops yeah. off. I'll never skip another road trip again. <laughs> never. <laughs> Ever. And we'll revisit this comment in next week's vlog. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. But the boys played 11 innings of baseball and ended up winning in walk-off fashion to move our record to 5-0 on the year. So today for our workout, we have our basic movements. We have a hinge on the lower half and a squat. We're gonna do barbell hip thruster and a squat for that. On the upper half, we're gonna have a single arm bench press and a cable row. So four movements today, but it's a strength day. So I try to go a little bit heavier, uh, closer to my max ranges. The goal with that is if you lift close to your max, like within 90% of your max for six to nine reps, every 10 or so days, you can maintain strength for a very long period of time. I honestly don't know what my max is on barbell hip bridge. I imagine it's like six or seven plates. So we're just gonna try to go as heavy as we can and see where we get to. I'm gonna try to do a set of five. I'd like to leave one in the tank. That'll be about 16% less. So that'll put me about 84% of my max. That's my thought process. I imagine four plates is gonna go up pretty easy. <laughs> that was somewhat challenging, but definitely can do more. Probably stick with five plates today. Chat, please don't clip this, but the hardest part of this exercise is getting it up. Once it's up, I can bridge for days. Okay, so the reason that I'm doing box squats like this is because my hip structure is a little bit corkscrewed. So my hip socket should be like this for my femur can sit in there and rotate, but uh, mine are corkscrewed. So my femur can't rotate nearly as much and it can't flex nearly as much either. 
So if I go too deep in squat, like if I get down at this angle, I'm just putting a lot of pressure bone on bone. My hips have to roll, adductors have to take a lot more of the brunt. I end up with groin problems, lower back problems, stuff like that. You know, lifting is not worth having back spasms and being out of competition because your groin is hurt or something. So I box squat, make sure I only go to the depth that I have. I get whatever strength I need out of it because that's the only strength I'm gonna be able to use in the game anyway because my body doesn't have more range of motion. And I consider that good. Some people consider it soft if you don't go all the way down, but I'm trying to play baseball, not power lift or lift for a living. So that's why I box squat. Let's see what 275 feels like. Yeah, and Raku was squatting 440 last night, ass to grass. So he's definitely got me beat. Oh. Well, it already feels heavier, that's for sure. He walks by in sunglasses, watches me lift. Box squatting 275 gives me a thumbs up. Respectful, disrespectful shit talk I've ever been a part of. I don't know how to feel about that. He just knows he's cooler than I am. Maybe I should lift more weight. All right, so I'm trying to get full retraction and full pronation. So full range of motion. My right arm is definitely sore from pitching. <laughs> Everything on the left side feels way easier today. Okay, let's see how 315 goes. 315 is a pretty soft weight, huh? It's just not impressive. It's not good. There's probably college kids that squat more than I do. So after my lift, it was time for a light day of catch. Now at this point, we are 5-0 and as a team, and it might seem like smooth sailing, but it hasn't been. We've had multiple starters to get sick and miss starts. We've played three extra inning games out of our five total games, so we're scrambling a little bit to stay afloat on the pitching front. We got our closer going four out of five and our starters going an inning on bullpen days already. We're five games in. But hey, do we have a loss? Yeah, we don't have a loss. We're stacking those wins up. These are all must-win games, guys. Yeah, as long as we sit down in the dugout all day, same spots will be fun. <laughs> I'm going to resist the urge to throw off speed today. Because if I throw off speed at this speed, I'll just create bad habits. Okay, so second day soreness, I'm not trying to throw anything hard. We're going like three, maybe four out of 10 intensity. Treating this as like a hybrid day after. I have six days, so I basically have two day after starts this time. This is a nice easy catch game. Tomorrow I'll get a little bit more long toss in. Bullpen Friday, start Sunday. And with that, it was time to watch some more baseball. Now, if you've watched baseball on TV, you've definitely seen shots of the starting pitchers sitting together in the dugout. You may have thought to yourself, I wonder what they're talking about. Here's some examples. I hit him right here. It wasn't hit that hard. It looked like he like reached for it. Like, honestly, that's pretty badass that he's staying in the game. Big respect for that. Did it, did it get him straight on or on the side? Or? Oh, he hit the glove first. Glove first and then, and then the cheek. I've had a couple close calls. I haven't been hit in the head. I took one off the shin though. It cost wow. me five weeks in the Cy Young. Five weeks? I cut it right on the right on the side right here. Side? Five inch like diagonal fracture. I would have won the Cy Young that year if I didn't get fractured. I finished six and I didn't even pitch the last six weeks of the season. Now we gotta sit in our, uh, are we in the right order? It's not the same order from last night. If it's working, we don't go night tonight. We gotta find a new one. Superstition's a weird thing, man. We don't believe in superstition, but if it's working, we're certainly not gonna go against it. How much do you think it costs to advertise on the pants? I'm just thinking like, if I could get a Bauer outage logo on everyone's pants, like right there. <laughs> oh, that's a hit. That's gonna be a run, boys. Hey, I think we found our order. Here's a question for you. Would you rather be the guy that looks average but the ball is coming out harder, or the guy that looks like the ball is coming out harder, but is actually average. Obviously, like you take the velocity, I think, but sometimes it's super deceptive when a guy looks like he's throwing fuel and the ball just never gets there. What do you got on quick pitch off-speed stuff, though? That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where I stand on it. Quick pitch, you think, oh, they're going to be like, uh, uh, right? <laughs> Trying to go, the velocity stuff will be more effective? I don't know, I though. There's only one way to find out. I'll let you know next game. <laughs> Strategy question. We're playing here at altitude. Would you rather have your outfielders take away all of those and give up a ball over their head or play back, give those up, but catch some of the doubles? 
la bola, dos strikes, se acabó el juego. So yeah, boys put up 18 runs today. Spank the Tigers, another sweep, so we're six and one in the air. So that's a lot of fun. What isn't fun is not having food at the field. The big difference between Japan and MLB and LMB. In Japan and in MLB, you get to have food spread at the field. Here, in LMB, at least with the rows, this is what the this is what the food spread looks like after the game. Which means that to get dinner, we leave the field and either do Uber Eats or go out to eat or eat at the hotel with room service or whatever the guys choose to do. But the game's been going like four hours. So we're getting out of here at like 11, 11.30. So there's not much open. So the food situation's not uh, not the most ideal. It is what it is. So that was Wednesday and we're now 6-0 as a team. Thursday was an off day and I've never seen an active volcano before, but it just so happens that Mexico City has one of those. So I decided to check it out. So that's that's the active one there. A couple months ago, got a lot of activity. <laughs> if we got if we're lucky, maybe we can see some. So we're at 12,000 feet elevation in the middle of two volcanoes. One's active, one's not. <laughs> Rachel, what happened last time you came in contact with a, uh, a wild animal? I don't know. What happened? <laughs> uh oh. No, no. And they ate my medication. Clearly has not learned her lesson. Do we know the, what elevation is it? Because Mexico City is 7,500. In pies, in pies, meters. Popocatepetl is 17,880 feet. That's way up there. What's Everest? 29,000. So in essence, we're like halfway up Mount Everest right now. Oh boy, we'll see how the, uh, we'll see how the cardio is here. We're going up more. How far, how far more up does the road go? 1,000 or more meters. Meters, okay. 3,000 more feet, so we're gonna get up to, to like... Uh... No, it's <laughs> not. We wanna experience something we've never experienced. <laughs> All right, up we go. Okay, so we made it up. We're about 20,000 feet now. Uh, we're in the middle of a cloud. It's hailing. That was thunder rolling through the mountains up here. And it's just like echoing off the rock, which is pretty crazy. This is so cool. We're getting pelted by hail. Ow! Dude, this is nuts. Just getting annihilated by hail. Okay, so we're basically at the height of like Everest base camp right now, 20,000 feet. I just took one of my new favorite pictures. Definitely gonna frame it and put it on my wall at home. Okay, now that it's stopped hailing on us, we're gonna try to hike up a little bit, get a better view. So the soil here is very dusty in general, and now all the soil is wet and dusty. Shoes are gonna be a mess. Kev's poor bright yellow. Those Lakers, ASU shoes, ASU. Those are not gonna be looking too fresh after this. So we're going up there. Nowhere close to the top. I'm out of breath. One nice part about this is uh, won't have to do any, I can't even talk. Won't have to do any conditioning tomorrow. I'm getting it all in today. <sighs> yeah, so that's plain wing. And we're where? And we are right here right now. In this area right here. Yeah, so that's how high up we are. Uh, planes fly by here at uh, eye level. <laughs> we're just about at the top. The sun just came out. What do you think, Kev? I don't know, this was like the easiest hike I've ever done, but you know, just hearing everybody else out of breath, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Kev played it off pretty well right there. Two volcanoes, one of them active. <laughs> yeah, that's the active one right over there. We were on the other side of it, the first place we stopped, in between this volcano and that volcano. It's incredible to think that like, as much as we've climbed and as high as we are, we're nowhere near the top of that volcano. Kev went all the way up. He's all the way up there. I gotta go join him. <laughs> the Kevin special. <laughs> all right, we're going to the top. Going to the peak where Kev was. Uninterrupted view of the entire area. <laughs> Woo! Now the camera definitely doesn't do this view justice. It was incredible. So I spent some time taking some pictures while the volcano continued to spew ash into the air. Those roads down there are where we started. 
and uh, we're way up here right now. So we're all kind of slipping coming down the mountain, except for Rachel who has hiking boots on. One thing the vlog should know about Rachel, she always wears heels, flip flops, Crocs. Today she brought hiking boots. So this is a big day for Rachel, having the right foot attire. And we're gonna celebrate it by going and getting tacos at uh, one of Ivan's favorite taco places. We'll see how they are. Real authentic Mexican tacos. And he says they're delicious, so I can't wait. All right, give us your first thoughts, Kev. Right now. <laughs> that was mean, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> good? It's good though, yeah. So Kevin and I got the same thing, so I'm excited. Carne asada with uh, cheese and beans, a little bit of lettuce. I'm gonna put some uh, guacamole and some salsa on it. Okay, so review, the meat is very high quality. The beans are very good. All the flavors mix together very well. A little bit of kick to it, not much though. It's delicious. I'm gonna have to get like five more. Three? Only three tacos? You don't think I can eat more than three tacos? No faith. I'll pay five. <laughs> yeah, if you come to this place, Taco de Carmelo, good place to start. Taco Lorenza with uh, corn tortilla, but it's like a chip. It's gonna be a struggle. It serves me right for putting the camera in Kevin's face as if it wasn't gonna happen to me tonight. Okay, Taco Poblano. This one's for Buster. He loves Poblano chili. He's not here, so I had to try it for him. Buster might be onto something. This is my number one for sure. It's not spicy, it's very flavorful. That's actually really good. That's legit, right? Is that your number one? It might be. That one's for you, Buster. If you're watching this, good recommendation on the green chili. Who wants to play some catch? Who does not have a cat? I think I'm the odd man out. Like, I got you. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Stay there, stay there. You're good. No, whatever you want. If you're good, I'll throw more after. I just gotta throw a pen. Yep, that all happened very quickly. I missed it and caught it and I didn't even know what happened. Thank you, sir. Okay, so today's a yellow day on 4-App, which means do my normal stuff, but caution, don't overdo it. So we're gonna get a nice easy bullpen in, sit in like the low 80s, maybe ramp a couple up to like 85, 86 at the end. But we're working on command, so eyesight, Keep the posture stable, drive the hand through the catcher's glove. Mike Mann was trash last game, and that's why I was trash last game. So you're not practicing your eyes closed? I might practice eyes, eyes open, eyes closed. I think you gotta go for it, just both eyes closed. Just... <laughs> both eyes closed, Pen. Yikes. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> At this point in my career, I know exactly what to work on to improve my command, velocity, and arm health, but a lot of young pitchers don't have that information, and they don't have access to a pitching coach with that information, which is why we developed 4App, a state-of-the-art smartphone app that allows me to personally review your mechanics and give you drills and cues to work on so you can get better results. Getting started is extremely simple. Just record two videos of your pitching mechanics, upload them to the app, and I'll personally send you feedback. With a full mechanical analysis, you'll receive a more detailed breakdown of every flaw in your delivery, including a video breaking down each of your flaws, personalized drills and cues to resolve those flaws, and a personalized message from me explaining what I found and what to focus on to resolve those flaws. Getting started is completely free, and a full breakdown is only $200, a much more cost-effective and convenient option than your traditional pitching coach. So if you're looking for better results on the field, search 4App Sports in the App Store. That's 4APP Sports in the App Store, or click the link in the description to get started today. Now back to the bullpen so you can watch how I apply this process to my training in real time. Okay, let's get a... Hey, that was actually a good split. I could see the circle on it. Let's get one of these. Oh boy, lazy. Problems last game, getting ahead, count, commanding the ball, getting the ball where I need to. I was pulling off my fastball, pulling the cutter a little bit, trying to get direction through the plate and not dive off over towards first base. So that's what we're working on for the first couple pitches here is mechanics. Let's get that to the arm side, stay through it. There we go. So when I'm working on mechanics, I don't really care much where the ball goes, just that I execute the mechanics right and I keep my eyes locked on the glove. There we go, that's the one. Okay, one of the best ways to practice not pulling off is to throw backdoor breaking balls because if you pull off, you have no shot of getting it there. So we're gonna go with some backdoor cutters here. This is again, just for mechanics purposes. There it is, I like that. So here we're setting direction, just making sure the posture doesn't deviate off, keeping the eyes locked on the target. For one splitter arm side, there it is. 
and we'll throw a back door slider there it is okay so now the mechanics are going well i try to use those mechanics but focus on command here switching the mindset between thinking about mechanics and command is pretty difficult Let's see how i do at it i'd rather have that oo than miss off I get ahead in the count with that it's good yeah my cutter was up last game so i gotta make sure i get the hand out and get it down down middle is my That's the one right there. Okay, now let's try a chase slider. S, then we'll get a fastball up and in. Good sequence right there. This is actually an important note for kids out there. If you think about mechanics all the time in your pen, then you never practice actually thinking about command. So it's good to bounce back and forth between think about mechanics a couple times, then think about command, challenge yourself, see if you can do it. Make sure our timing disruptions are there. Hey, cutter down away, but it has to be in the bottom part of the zone to count. There we go. Now we'll throw a splitter. It has to be arm side half of the plate and below the zone. Yes. I'm going to go chase slider. Yep. Got a perfect tunnel. Splitter's been strike fastball down the way, bottoming out. That was strike fastball down the way, sliding away. So now we'll go fastball down and away, stick it there for taking strike three. Yep. Go fastball in again. Okay. We'll try the curveball on the plate. Just aggressive with the hand through the finish of the pitch. There we go. Now we have freeze fastball down and away, or we can get tricky and we can go back to our slider freeze. No shoddy swings, but it's got to be in the zone. There it is. Now fastball, bottom of the zone, strike. No. Gave up on it early. Commit to the pitch and throw it. One of us. Get it there. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. That was a good pen. Feel very good about where my command's at. Got some sequences in. Got the mechanics feeling good first. Did a good job of switching between a mechanical focus and a command focus. Cutter was down, everything was straight in line. And then braking instead of being pulled. I like that. Good work. But, uh, Good you work. Know what? Today, the splitter got movement on it. Yeah. Bigger than what I saw before. Before I was doing this, mm -hmm. and so it was flat, just kind of floating. Mm -hmm. Today, I was like, the shoulder was like locked in, and I was driving everything through. And, the and, way, so it had... and the way you told him, you know, inside and the right or away and the left. It, yeah. Hey, the command was there with movement. Yeah. The so big key was just getting the posture right early in the pen. As without the right posture and without the right head stability, you can't get your hand to a consistent place. And so you're trying to get in or out or whatever, and you're kind of pulling off. So you have to make adjustments late with the hand. The ball doesn't move right. If you can lock your posture and keep your head stable, get everything started off middle, then the movement can change. If you get everything started off middle, then the movement can take over. But everything looks like a strike. This is Aristides Aquino, a former teammate of mine in Cincinnati who had about a million home runs in his first couple weeks in the big leagues. Oh. One base runner sense this ball is hammered in deep center field. They call him the Punisher. And he's got some things to say to the vlog. Oh, yeah? You hit me on my face, you hit you hit. Remember that? Yeah. You tracked me outside. What are you trying to say? I, what I'm trying to say is that you have something to put in your channel. Okay, yeah, I gotta put the, I gotta put your highlights on my channel? Yes. <laughs> How come you never hit Homer off me? I don't know. Because you're my, my friend, my teammate. <laughs> okay. Parecía un imparable. Y aquí está Aquino de nueva cuenta por segunda. No pecho, parecía que por un momento. Oh boy, Aquino! What's your nighttime go to? Are you a video game guy? Are you like a Netflix? I've been doing Netflix at night and also Pokemon I've been getting into. Really? What game? It's Pokemon Diamond. I think you actually play Pokemon Pearl. We've just been, it's just a great like time waste we get into. It's like, it's pretty close to the same thing. They got kids with the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game. Can you battle like friends on it or what? Yeah, is it? Can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I used to crush Pokemon when I was a kid. The original red, yellow version on the, yeah, yeah, the big ass Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to collect the cards, play the yeah. games. I was all about it. What about you? I'm mostly YouTube, just watching stuff on YouTube, learning. I like, I have my business that's all YouTube content, so. I just watch as much YouTube as possible to try to learn what works. 
This is Aristides Aquino. You may remember him from a couple seconds ago as the guy who wanted me to put his highlights in my vlog. Well, every time he popped his head into the frame, he got another hit, and I'm all about helping my guys get more hits, so here's some more Aquino highlights. And here's some more Aquino hits in the future. Daniel Cruz Martinez Irving, originario de Saltillo. Buenas noches. Aristides Aquino con esa línea que... Vamos, Aquino. ¿Quién es ese movie? Es like Star Wars when they float those like back to tanks. You've never seen Star Wars? What the f Star Wars video game? Viene para Jove, ese batazo va a internarse en el jardín izquierdo. En cuanto el patrullero estaba levantando. I need my first sword, man. It's been too long since I've sorted someone. Que tenía gente en las bases cuando vino a trabajar. Batazo por el central. Allá va Barreto. Barreto la tiene. That's a game in under three hours, boys. Good game, good game. Good game. So with all those Aquino hits and a great performance by the staff, we moved to 7-0 on the year, which left me one more day to prepare for my start. And I decided to do it by playing an age-old BP game with some friends. Am I throwing first? It's a little left of the, the wheel. Dude, and this, if you go too hard here, it's a hazard for sure. So here's how the game works. You pick a target, or the hole, and a tee box, which is where you throw from. Closest ball to the target wins a point. If your ball rolls onto the infield dirt, that's a hazard, and you lose a point. I ain't gonna get it done. I ain't gonna get it done. Heads up. Well, that's too hard. Who is closer? Uh, three wins for me. We're getting a little tricky with this one. I'll go first because it's my hole. Needs to come back and stop. Just stop. Well, I mean. Uh, I, thought that was coming. I think Ponce is in the lead right here. Hell yeah, I don't know if that's getting there, Lake. That getting there. Hell that's pretty far off. I got Ponce winning that one. Ponce is leading us off. Tire of the bucket. Right, tire of the bucket, all right. Oh my Come. Okay. Is it going to be on the, yep. Right I'm up. Watch this hole in one. Come back. Ah, I mean, I split his feet. That's pretty good. Oh, oh that's, gone. that's a win for me, right? Yeah. Finally, we're back in the winner's circle. We shagged so much BP during the year that we have to find some way to entertain ourselves. And speaking of entertainment, the entire time BP was going on, cars were racing around the circuit outside our stadium. Fun fact, our stadium's right in the middle of the F1 track where they hold the Mexican Grand Prix, so we decided to go see what cars were out there. Yeah, because this, you can see them coming down the straight, and then you can see them, like, turning and stuff, too. But I think we're a little bit... Oh, there we go. Hell yeah! No, is he racing the track? Look at that, hitting the apex. Oh, here we go, here we go. Our patience has paid off. We get to see a, look at that guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. What is that, dude? That's like an ice cream truck. There's a McLaren, okay. That's an old one, that's an MP4. No, that's a 650, right? Hell yeah, dude. Oh, dude, this guy's booking it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, why are we going so slow? Pick it up! It drives me nuts watching people drive their car. I'm like, I could drive your car way better than you could. <laughs> this is how I get ready for a game. We tried to watch cars going around the track earlier. There was no cars, so I had to get it on the, on the computer. Go Checo. Viva Mexico. Okay, time to actually do something to prep for my game tomorrow. What you got? First pitch hacking, huh? The only people we gotta be careful, the second hitter, like sometimes he's aggressive and sometimes he's like, slap, slap. Yeah. Like they were swinging, but they, I, none of them 
from the lineup yesterday, none of them can make can hurt us. With yeah. The bomb. I didn't see I didn't see any danger. Yeah. It's just all but, like single guys. Yeah. But same thing. We just stay away. Make us make him big, beat us this way. Yeah. I never I never been in a in a team like this, bro. Just from being in the lineup one time in the week, I think it's a win. Yeah. Because it's a tough fucking lineup. Man. Yeah. I'd like to pitch against our, our team. Just like see. Yeah. Yeah. Like all right, like let me let me like figure it out in the mat. Like what are these guys good at? What are they bad at? See if I can beat them. It'd be fun. These motherfuckers right here. They're fucking yeah. Loud, man. Like who fancy the big reviews from Barry? It doesn't. Nothing. Nothing, right? You don't get an atmosphere like this until playoffs. It's crazy. Yeah. Padres when they played the Dodgers got pretty loud. It's like big play and then quiet. Like big play. Here, here it's just like constant. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. It's like the fucking playoffs every day. Yeah. You in there tomorrow, right? You catch tomorrow? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Never know. Hopefully. I'm ready to play every day. That makes one of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready to play every day. <laughs> every fifth day, maybe. <laughs> you hear him on the track? Yeah. As soon as I was in the lunchroom when we came down, I heard him going again. That's a good spot to hear him. Yeah. The doors are open. I was like, well, I didn't get to see him there, so I'm gonna go watch the F1 sprint race from last night. How do you prepare for a start, like in scouting the other team? What do you do? Are you like a video guy? Yeah. What are your What are your like key takeaways? Do you Are you looking at like aggressive or patient? Are you looking at like where the power zones are? Like what's yeah. the? If I'm watching from the side or like, yeah, let's see like who's first pitch hacking. Yeah, how how their bodies react. Oh, you look at the hands. Yeah, I feel like that. What's your What's your read on that? When you see an active hands guy, are you like, what does that tell you? Terms of quick pitches. Okay, so it's timing. Not much danger in the lineup. I haven't seen like a team wide approach. It's kind of individualized. They don't seem like they're going too well right now. Off speed. If you can go off speed for strikes early, you're probably going to be set. This lineup right now to me is like, just go throw your best stuff, pitch your game plan, and like you'll you'll beat them. That's my read so far, I could be wrong. When I want to throw hard, it's how aggressively can I drop into my backside, not how aggressively can I push with my backside. So I'll think, like, I'll come up and I'll just like, literally let my body fall. I get a little bit deeper in my backside, get into absorption, and then it just turns. But because I'm a little bit lower, my stride gets a little bit further. The biggest thing on the backside is getting the hip to turn over and rotate. Second biggest thing is how springy can you be hitting the bottom and turning that rotation. It's not an active like, oh, I'm gonna like push off the rubber. It's how quickly can I do, like how can I absorb here and turn it into rotation? As long as your center of mass is slightly in front of your backside, then you'll get that transition. If you're here, obviously it's just gonna drop straight down. You'll get no linear movement. But if you're here and you're dropping down, every little bit you drop, the angle starts to change. And so you get this curve of like, and so this back leg just becomes about absorbing the energy so you can get lower. The lower you get, the more energy from gravity you can harvest. And then it's like, once you get to that bottom point, can you just do this to get this hip to turn? So as long as your block leg sticks in the, in the ground in the front and blocks really well, all your energy's there. Right. That's why my cue is like drop aggressively. And then I, my second cue when I throw hard is I try to get it late. That's one of the problems with the injuries right now too. People don't get their velocities with proper sequencing. They're getting so big, strong, fast twitch, they want to throw hard and that helps for sure. But then they can get away with poor sequencing and still throw hard. Well, we're going to lose every game ever. It's got to happen at some point. Well, happy start day. <clears throat> well, happy start day. Uh, here's the situation. We are 7-1 on the year. We lost our first game last night, which means we are 1-1 one one in this series, which means today I have a chance to win the series. We got about 90 pitches. Should be able to get about six innings in, so it should feel like a normal start. Let's go see what we can get done. Okay, I've done my check-in on four out today. I am uh, green. Now, 75 is not the highest I've been, but it is a good day. I go outside, get a little walking done see the sunlight. I also have my uh, little scattering report card right here, so I'm gonna study that while I'm walking around outside and uh, get ready for the game. We got about 45 minutes until I need to start warming up, so enough time to hang out and chill a little bit. Okay, I've changed my warm-up routine for a game a little bit recently. I used to start an hour and 45 minutes before the game for home starts and an hour and 40 before road starts, so I knew exactly when to start. 
I knew my entire routine. I've gotten rid of sitting in the hot tub and I've gotten rid of a couple of the static stretching exercises that I used to do. I replaced it with some scap exercises, some shoulder warm up stuff, and a dynamic warm up outside. Also, trying to adapt to playing at higher altitude and not being in as good a cardio shape relative to where I'm playing. So I need a little bit more rest, but last game, I took a little bit too much rest in between my stuff. So I sat for 10 minutes in between warm up and bullpen and 10 minutes in between bullpen and the game. And that was a little bit too long. So I've shortened it up a little bit today. We're gonna to start 45 minutes before the game outside, which means we're gonna start an hour and 15 minutes before the game inside doing all my scap exercises and stuff like that. So yeah, adapting to a new league, a new team, a new geographic location. My routine has to change a little bit, so I'm still trying to figure this out. Normally this is stuff you would figure out during spring training, but I didn't have a spring training. So I'm trying to figure out on the fly in the middle of the season with games that actually mean something. We'll see if I get a little bit better today. Almost. Oh, yeah. That's our fun today. Yep. Let's go. Stuff looks good today. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. It should be fine, baby. Yep. They're going to come out hacking, I think. Nah. No? You don't think? We'll see. Like, I, the only one I really, really think is going to be hacking is going to be the second hitter. You know? Yeah. There's a couple guys who are going to be hacking. I'm going to be looking for them. Yeah. Don't worry, okay. baby. I got you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. They're ready. They're ready. Bravo! Get ahead. All right, motherfuckers, let's go. Yeah, sword! Objective number one done. I got my sword. Not a sword, dude. Swing the bat. Freeze. Freeze fastball down away. Just get it there. He's out. Yep. Can I help you? Just looking. Yes. Dot. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Now, here's where I start setting records. The next nine hitters all went down via strikeout. Yes! As part of that string of nine strikeouts, I did something I've never done before. I threw an immaculate inning. For those who don't know, that's three hitters, three pitches each, and three strikeouts. I've never done that at any level of my baseball career. And if you want a full breakdown of exactly what I was thinking during that streak in this entire game, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video where I break everything down. You! It's immaculate inning, baby! Pay attention! Doors! He thought slider, Mama Huevo. Don't guess. Yes! My velo back yet? 93, not quite. So I finished six innings with 14 strikeouts and one walk. I set a Diablos franchise record for most strikeouts in a game by a single pitcher. I set a league record for most consecutive strikeouts, and the fans wanted to show their appreciation, so they had me do three curtain calls. Nine strikeouts in a row. That's a, a league record. League record. It hasn't yeah. been done since 1979. You gotta go back up. Right now? Go back up. Yeah. And with that, I want to take a second to thank all the fans who are in attendance. It was a very special day for me. I don't think I've ever had a curtain call. Definitely not three curtain calls. So thank you all for making it such a special day. I love you guys. Standing ovation three times. What a crowd. Thank you guys.